Christmas 2009. Have faith and trust in the future? In the interview, the head of the Protestant Church in Germany, Margot Kessmann. What is for you the main message of Christmas? That God is not distant. He knows about our suffering, fears, death, hardship and conflicts. Christmas stems from Easter. This birth would not be interesting, but for the belief that Christ is risen. People say, he must have been a very special child, and God has not left the world to its own devices. He is among us. What's the unique Protestant message? that you are free to think for yourself, form your own opinion, and read the Bible. Martin Luther said there should be schools for girls, revolutionary at the time, and for boys so they can read the Bible themselves. Luther translated it into German. And to sharpen your conscience so you can say, as he did at the Diet of Worms, here I stand, I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. That's Protestant. In October, you became the first woman to be elected head of the German Protestant Church. It was an interesting week because two other Protestant women took over top offices. Angela Merkel became chancellor and Christine Lieberknecht became the only woman premier of a German state. Is there something special about German Protestant women? Maybe the theological content of what we've been saying since the Reformation is now coming to the fore, that the priesthood is open to anyone who's baptized. Both women and men can occupy any office. The leaders of the Reformation probably couldn't even have imagined it, but especially in East Germany, vicarages were places where people learned to think independently. This Christian freedom helped them live under a dictatorship, to think and to develop. It is very noticeable that many East German Protestants later rose to leading political positions. You represent 25 million Christians in Germany. From among your international contacts, do you know of any other woman who holds a similar high office in a church or religious community? I'm not aware of anyone. Of course, there are women in the Protestant churches around the world who will take on offices of that nature in the next generation. Agnes Abum comes to mind, a lay preacher from Africa and president of the World Council of Churches. She plays a leading role in African society. In the congratulations I received from many people, from Romania, from Zimbabwe, from Argentina, they all said how important it is to see that women can do it, take a leading role in our church, and that encouraged them to stand for such offices. But other churches differ. The Russian Orthodox Church won't speak to you because they say they can't accept a woman bishop. Well, I accept that the Russian Orthodox Church doesn't ordain women, but I have to respect the rules of another church if I want dialogue. We accept there are patriarchs in the Russian Orthodox Church. That would be unimaginable for us. We would never address someone as your holiness. But that's part of ecumenism. They have a different idea of the priesthood, and I expect others to respect ours. We say women can represent the church at every level. The Russian Orthodox Church cannot have top-level contact with us and say they will exclude women for reasons of protocol because a patriarch may not stand beside a woman. What does that mean in concrete terms? No contact unless they accept that? Of course there can be contact at all levels, but anyone who has contact with the Protestant Church leadership in Germany has to accept women leaders, not just myself. Kathrine Göring Eckhardt is the president of our synod. I heard in an interview the attitude, I'm glad I'm talking to a man, I'll ignore the rest. I can't say that. Anyone wanting high-level contact must accept our inclusion of women in the priesthood. Er muss akzeptieren, dass wir ein Amtsverständnis haben, das Frauen einschließt. 
Bishop Gerhard Ludwig Müller, who watches over ecumenism for the Catholic Church in Germany, says he foresees interfaith friction with ecumenism in Germany. Do you agree? What's the situation with ecumenism? The grassroots ecumenical movement is well developed. You'll see that at next year's Ecumenical Church Congress in Munich. But top-level theological differences date back to the Reformation. For example, our concept of the Church says it exists where the Gospel is proclaimed and baptism and Holy Communion are celebrated in accordance with the Gospels. So we can recognize the Roman Catholic Church as a Church. But they don't recognize us because their concept of the priesthood and of the Eucharist are different. It's said that we can't celebrate Holy Communion together, a symbol of unity and community. You said you want to introduce a day to focus on Christianity under threat next year, on the 28th of February. How did you get the idea for that project? That was decided by the Protestant Synod in Germany. I'd like to make clear that Christians are the most frequently persecuted religious community in the world. Everything might look simple for Christians, but that's a perception of Western democracies where Christians are free to express themselves. Christians in countries like Indonesia or India, Iraq and Turkey find it hard to practice their faith freely or even to get to church without fearing for their lives. I want to emphasize that. Freedom of religion is a human right which I'm committed to in Germany and in the rest of the world as well. Freedom to develop and grow is inherent in the concept of freedom. And it's important to pray to God on behalf of these people. Is it also a reaction to the complaints of Muslims that they suffer discrimination here in our country? No, it's not an attempt to say things for Christians are just as hard. I'm trying to heighten people's awareness about what religious freedom means in its best and most positive sense. That's very important. Many people in Germany don't realize how free they are. They can go to worship every Sunday even though it may not be very important to them but it shows an attitude to life. They profess affiliation to a religious community, to a set of values, and it shows where they belong in the world. It's important to demonstrate this. And when I visit countries where Christianity is suppressed, I realize how important it is for people to know that we have not forgotten them. They think we are a small minority here and we are afraid, we live in conflict, but we belong to a community which thinks of us. Intercession is a very important sign of community. What's your wish for 2010? First of all, I wish that people would not dismiss thoughts of a global community as naive. Instead, we need to develop the vision of justice, peace, and the conservation of creation. They've always been important subjects for me. We can improve the world and take concrete measures to do so. To be strong enough as Christians to intervene, that's important. And I think we should have even more courage because we believe in life after death and a future with God. That makes it our duty to stand up for what we believe in and say that we see traces of this future in this world. Thank you very much.